I've been going through my junk box and uh, one of the junk boxes and uh, I was looking at these and I thought I'd share them with you. They're capacitors and um, not very big values. Um, that one's 1 1.2 microfarads. Uh, this one is um, 330,000 picofarads. And, uh, this one is one microfarad. You say, well, okay, nothing special about a one microfarad capacitor. Um, but this is a capacitor that's used for induction heating. And um, you may not be aware of induction heating, but it's uh, a, a process used in uh, industrial and scientific applications whereby a very high frequency uh, electrical energy is used to heat electrically conducting parts, usually metal, but it could be graphite or other anything that uh, conducts uh, electricity. And uh, all of the parts of your car that have been hardened have been induction hardened. Um, bits in your fridge, the uh, the hard drive on your computer is likely to have been uh, heated and shrunk onto the shaft. Uh, of the uh, of the driving motor, and um, every day you are in contact with parts that I can guarantee have been processed with capacitors like this. It's um, very very widely used, um, but not everybody's aware of it. So I thought I'd uh, tell you a little bit about these capacitors. These capacitors were uh, invented and developed by a man called Albert Zhukovovich and um, uh, his company is CLEM and uh, as you'll see on, uh, on these capacitors and uh, he developed these capacitors specifically because he needed them to carry out a particular job. He had invented uh, an induction heating system called the periodic system, uh, a periodic meaning um, no fixed frequency um, and uh, prior to his invention uh, most uh, induction heaters worked with either a, a Hartley oscillator or a Colpitts oscillator um, and a uh, reasonably fixed frequency and uh, Zhukovovich come up with a process which you can find the patents for if you search for the uh, periodic system um, he came up with a process whereby the system would tune to the tank circuit. Um, the tank circuit being the induction heating coil uh, that heats the component and the capacitor that uh, provides the, uh, the KVA, the, uh, the energy, uh, to react with the coil in, the, um, in uh, that uh, oscillating circuit. And he needed capacitors that were essentially low voltage. Um, but very high current. The uh, prior technology used ceramic capacitors that worked at uh, several thousands of volts, uh, 12,000 volts, 20,000 volts, um, and, uh, but they had uh, fairly low values uh, measured in uh, picofarads. Um, whereas he wanted capacitors that could carry a lot of current. And to give you some idea, this capacitor this uh, uh, little fella uh, is capable of working at um, uh, 100 kilohertz, so 100,000 cycles per second, and it can carry 650 amps. Um, think about it, a one microfarad capacitor carrying 650 amps, and uh, it can do that at um, uh, voltages of um, uh, 500 volts uh, RMS so a very powerful capacitor uh, maximum rated KVAR um, uh, 300 KVAR this capacitor has to be water cooled um, and that's not because of a, a fault in the dielectric it's simply that amount of current uh, at that high frequency the I squared R losses, the resistance losses alone uh, would cause the capacitor to get hot. Um, 
So in, in my world of engineering, the electronic engineering, everything was water cooled. Um, and uh, I made capacitor banks that use lots of these capacitors, um, either in parallel or series parallel combinations to uh, provide very high KVA tank circuits for use in metal melting, soldering, brazing. Um, I could bore the pants off you, I had 30 years of designing equipment to use uh, things like this. Before I show you close-ups of the capacitor, I'll tell you a, a bit more about the induction heating application. Um, most of my work involved parallel tank circuits, that is the work coil in parallel uh, with the capacitor, although uh, it can be used in series, uh, but to say most of my work was uh, parallel work. Um, and essentially uh, I have a work coil, which is a, a water-cooled copper tube, um, which is a sh shape to go around the component or by the side of the component to be heated, and that coil is connected in parallel with uh, one or more uh, capacitors like this and uh, a high frequency oscillating uh, voltage and current is developed in the circuit. And you might say, well, what's the point of that? If you think of the work coil as being the primary of a transformer, and the uh, workpiece, the part that's to be heated, is the short circuit secondary of the transformer, um, then Clearly, if your primary has got uh, 650 amps oscillating in it at uh, 100 kilohertz, then um, uh, you can have a very high current developed in the, the piece that you want to heat, because it looks like a short circuit secondary. Um, and because of the high frequency, the component possesses a, a property of inductance. and um, and, you know, you might think, well, what's the inductance of a, of a, a half-inch steel bar, for instance? Um, but it's, it's quite high, and um, at the higher the frequency, so the greater the apparent inductance. And this causes the current to flow in the outer surface of the part that you want to heat, or just under the outer surface of the part. So if you take a steel bar and you heat it to red heat, and then water quench it, um, you can harden the outer surface of that bar, yet the inner part of the bar is to remain relatively cool and is not heat affected. That means you can, you can have a steel bar, so if, if this were a steel bar we could have heated the outside of it um, and then rapidly quenched it so as it's hard, but inside it's still malleable, so it means We've got a very hard, um, resist um, uh, abrasive resistance surface, yet it remains relatively malleable. So things like your um, uh, the camshaft or a rocker shaft in your uh, car, it's got hard bearing surfaces on it, uh, yet it can take mechanical shock and strain without breaking because the, the main body of the material has remained unaffected. It has some very interesting properties, and uh, as I say, I'll pull up some pictures and show you some, uh, some typical applications. These are all parts that have been induction heated, um, mainly automotive parts, but bits for tractors, bits for aeroplanes, and uh, they've been uh, heated, they've had the surface heated up to hardening temperature, and then it's been water quenched and uh, it's a very selective process you can see uh, some of the shafts have got uh, bands of hardening um, and it's um, it's very desirable uh, from an impact point of view when you're hardening gears um, if you make the tooth of a gear completely hard all the way through then if there's a sudden shock uh, it could crack the gear off but by having a hard surface and a malleable uh, body uh, it's uh, much more able to withstand uh, mechanical shock. This is a reasonably high temperature application. Uh, that's me peering into the open crucible of a platinum melting 
furnace um, so a little furnace for precious metal melting and uh, the glasses I'm wearing you could look at the sun uh, with those without hurting your eyes uh, the platinum melts at um, something over 2000 degrees centigrade so uh, what's that that's over 3650 or thereabouts uh, Fahrenheit so uh, very high temperature there it's just warming up when it reaches melting temperature there's a, a bright white column of light uh, that literally beams out of that box uh, up into the air it's quite amazing uh, the capacitors are held in the uh, the box that says danger electricity there's all sorts of safety devices to stop you from getting in there um, but uh, say the capacitors are water cooled so uh, the field of induction heating you by necessity have a, a voltages and uh, cooling water and uh, high temperatures uh, so uh, it can get interesting when you first open a container like this and uh, you, you take the top off there's uh, a, a piece of silver foil a tamper evidence seal uh, that you have to break and uh, that has been uh, it heated by uh, induction heating uh, so the foil becomes the short circuit secondary of the transformer as it were and the heating coil is the primary and uh, same with uh, a, a thing like this um, you can just see there's a bit of the foil left there uh, the uh, the foils put into the to the cap the caps screwed on by machine and then it's uh, it, it's passed through the induction process and say so that will all be with uh, capacitors uh, like this um, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world the fact that you're looking at this video uh, part of the equipment that you're looking at will have been processed with capacitors like this even uh, making the uh, uh, the silicon chips uh, so the induction of growing crystals for silicon uh, is a, another induction heating application but this capacitor has been designed to have uh, very low inductance like uh, all of the uh, Salem capacitors and um, uh, essentially there's copper plate that comes up at uh, like an L in both cases and then uh, the one polarity is all connected to one pl plate and the other to the other so they interlace and um, say uh, low inductance 330,000 picofarads and uh, 450 volts at 250 amps at 100 kilohertz uh, this other capacitor we've got here is the, the 1.2 microfarads and again it's hard to imagine a, a lower inductance capacitor than this essentially inside here there's uh, Swiss rolls of uh, uh, foil and polymers um, to create the capacitors and one end connected to the top plate one end connected to the bottom plate and um, uh, a very precise soldering technique um, uh, it belies um, the appearance belies uh, what's actually inside there but uh, super cooling on a capacitor like that and uh, this one again uh, very low inductance uh, you see the ratings there um, 650 amps um, that is uh, a lot of current um, and uh, 300 kVAR um, that's packed into something that's, I don't know, uh, probably about the volume of a, of a packet of 20 cigarettes. Um, so uh, really quite some technology. Uh, unless you're involved with high power, you may not have a full appreciation uh, of those. Anyway, I just wanted to share those with you. Uh, thank you for listening to me rambling on. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.